In this video, I'd like to cover three more really important things to understand so you can get some more building blocks to continue on learning how to code. The first thing I'd like to talk about is variables. And variables are a way for you to store data so you can move it around your, your program and use it in lots of different ways. Data types. Data types are about uh, the type of data that you have in your variable. So there may be a type of string, which is like a text, a string of text like hello world. Or it may be the type of an integer, which is like a number. And of course, it's important to distinguish between different data types because you can't do certain operations with one data type that you can with another. For example, you cannot add together a string of words. There's no arithmetic for that. It doesn't make any sense. Whereas you can add together numbers. So it's important for your program to understand what type your data is. The next thing is functions or procedures. In the last video, we covered the main procedure that we wrote here. That's the first function that any Odin program will run. And the program will finish when it's done running through all the code that's found in your main procedure. So let's talk about variables. Uh, but before we start, you'll want to know how to follow along. In the last video, we had all of our code in a main.odin file. We're still using that file, but it's in a slightly different place. I put it in a subfolder called part 001. You can download the code off of a website called github.com, and I'll put a link to it down below, of course. To get the code, you just make sure you're here on the master branch, and you click on the green button that says code, and just the last option here is download zip. So you can download that uh, every time you watch a video, and you can get the latest, and just navigate to the proper folder, and you can open that text file. So you can open it again in Notepad, like we did in the last video, or you can try a different text editor if you would like. I highly recommend you use something very simple for now. So Notepad is great. Notepad++, whatever you use on other operating systems is fine. And uh, if you would like, you can try something a little more powerful, which is Sublime Text. I like Sublime. It's a little bit easier to read when I'm doing these videos. So I'm going to use this. Uh, Sublime Text is paid, but you can try it for free. And there's other things. I think Notepad++ is for free, of course, as well. So let's take a look at uh, variables. Last video, we called print line, and we printed this string called hello world. Hello world is a string. Let's create a variable for a string. We'll call it str. All of the variables have a name, and they point to a value. And they have a type in between, like a type uh, type designation. So for string, we know we do a colon. We can type string here equals. And I'll just type in our message here, hello world. There we go. So now I've created a variable called str. That's a common abbreviation for string variables when you're doing things like this. I've uh, told the compiler that it is the type string. It is not an integer, which is a number. That's another type we'll cover in a moment. If I try to do this, call this an int, the compiler will yell at me. It will not let me make this program. So I can do odin run. I'll point it to uh, part 001 in the folder that we're at, main.odin file. And it'll say, you know, this is, uh, this is a string. We can't use it as an int, basically. So let's change this to a string. And then we'll be able to compile just fine. Now, how do you use variables? Why are they important? Well. Uh, instead of passing in the text uh, to the print line function right here, I can pass in my variable, str, and it will run. It'll still print hello world. There, and it's useful because I may want to call this several times throughout my program, or I might have another type of function that uses string, which I'll show you in a moment. And then that way, we can pass it around, is the way we talk about it, pass this variable around and use it in multiple different ways. Now, I want to circle back to data types for a moment. I said that this is a data type string. Strings in Odin will always be in double quotations. And they're basically just a string of text. It can be numbers. It could be letters. Uh, it could be pretty much anything that goes between these two quotation marks. And that's a string. What if I wanted to create a number? So I can call number. I'll call it num for num. I can say that it's an int. And I can just choose any number, 100, for example. Now, there's actually lots of different types of uh, numbers in programming. Uh, there's small numbers, there's large numbers, there's numbers that can be negative or numbers that can only be positive, and there's also numbers that can be partial, can be fractional. The numbers that can be fractional are called floats. 
So let's do another one. We'll call it uh, FLT for float. I'm going to make this a float 64, which is pretty much the largest float number you can make. And I'll just call this maybe 10 and a half. That'll be the value. So I've got three different types, data types, three different variables of three different data types here. And I want to print each one of them out to the console. How can I do that? Well, fortunately, print line can actually handle any of these types. And when I say it can handle any of these types, that means that print line has been programmed such that you can pass in lots of different data types and it will print any one of them out to the, the console for you. So let's run this again. We have our hello world 110 and a half down there. It handles all of them just fine. Let's make our own print function and then we can see how this sort of works under the hood. So let's create, uh, let's we'll create my print and it'll be a procedure. So we use colon colon procedure and it's going to take an argument. Remember all of these are arguments, stir, num, float. These are all arguments. So we'll call this my argument and we have to give it a type. Let's give it type string. And to print that, we'll just reuse the print line function that we used up above in main. Now, notice how I named it something different. I named it my arg. Whenever you pass something into a function like this as an argument, you can rename it so that it can make more sense to you when you're reading your new function here. So within the context of my print function, I want to call this something different, right? And I can print out uh, my arg just like I did up here because again, print line can handle that. So when I run this, we're going to see exactly what we saw before. Why? Because I didn't actually use this function. I defined it, but I didn't use it. So let's use it now. Let's use my print and pass in string. I'm passing in my string variable because I know from the signature of this function, the definition of this function, I know it can handle strings. So I'm passing in a string. If I try to pass in anything other than a string, this won't work. So let's try it, make sure it works first. Now we have hello world printed twice. The first time happens right here. The next time uh, it prints 100, it's down here and then float and then it prints my string again because we call it right here. So that's why we see my uh, hello world twice. Now let's see what happens if we try to pass in a different data type as an argument. I'm going to pass in the number and the compiler is not going to like that. It won't print it. It says that we can't assign this num to a string type. So it won't work. So let's call this one uh, my print string. And we'll change this back to string. And let's make another one my print num. And this one will take a number. But we have to define this function, right? We have to define this procedure. My print num, it's a procedure. It takes a my num, let's call it my arg again. We can, doesn't matter. Uh, and this will be an integer. And we'll use our print line function again. See, I can name these things the, the same, th uh, my arg here, my arg here, my arg here, but they aren't the same because the, the my arg only matters within the context of that function. And when I say within the context, I mean within these curly brackets. This doesn't, uh, affect anything else outside that function. So I can name this whatever I want, my arg here and here, and they don't uh, they don't affect each other. They are completely separate. The program knows that they are two different variables, two different arguments. Now, when we talk about what's being passed in here, this is an argument what we're passing in. And then we talk about the signature of the function. We refer to it by a different name as a parameter. So the things that come into the function, when we're talking about it from this point of view, we talk about it being a parameter, but when we're talking about what's actually being passed in, we're talking about an argument. So there's two uh, terms that you'll have to be familiar with if you're reading documentation in that. So we called my print num and my print string. Let's compile it now and it should work fine. We have hello world down here, which is our second call to print the string. And then we have 100 beneath it, which is our second call to print the number. Why don't we continue on and make another function called my print float and we'll pass in our float. We have to write this function too, my print float. This would be a procedure. We'll call this my arg as well, no problem. 
and this will be a float 30 uh, float 64 type and we'll print that out just like we did above in the other functions and in our our main procedure so now we should see two sets of these values these variables being printed out to the console so just hit up so I re rerun my last command and there we have it once and twice so let's just review really quickly what we covered we covered variables which are kind of a name that you come up with and we tell the compile compiler that this variable of such and such a name is uh, equal to whatever we want to make it equal to and we designate each variable uh, by giving it uh, a type. We designate a type by typing it between the colon and the equal sign. And then we have functions, which are just another piece of data in our, our, our program. They are of type procedure, and they can take things like arguments, parameters, and they can do things just like we do in our main. So there's really no difference between these procedures right here that we made and the main procedure up here. Now there's another way we can write variables in Odin. We don't have to designate the type right here between the colon and the equals. Odin gives us uh, some shortcuts for this. So I'll make a new one called my stir. I'm going to do colon equals hello world two. If I just leave that empty space there, uh, if I remove, sorry, remove the, the string from between these two uh, markers, the colon and the equals, Odin can derive the type just because of the value that we set. So we set the value to a string, so Odin knows that it's a variable of type string. Integers are a little bit different. Uh, the default for integers for numbers, num2, will always be type int, like that. It'll be int by default. If you want to make it a different type, you have to change it to uh, the type specifically right here and it gets a little more complicated so I won't get to that right now ints is a, a good start uh, and then floats it's the same if you leave it out like this it will automatically change it to a type float and it'll be the type uh, for your system which I leave uh, f64 for me so play around with that and try to get a little more familiar with uh, what it feels like to write different functions print different data types, the strings, the integers, the floats, try a little bit of arithmetic. So you can print num plus num. So we'll have 100 plus 100 in that case. So we should get 200 on our second line printed right there. So play around with those different things and just get familiar with typing it out and uh, playing around with different types of arguments, function signatures, and that will help solidify it in your learning. So uh, make sure you subscribe. You can check out my next video when that comes out. You don't want to miss it. And hopefully you're learning something. If you have any questions, if there's anything that's just kind of foreign to you, definitely put that down below and I'll do my best to help. Thanks.